Hi, I'm Rick, and welcome back to The Journey. In this week's episode, things are seriously awry and weird up here in Galicia, a place that I know is not on your map, but nonetheless, strange things are happening here. So I have to explain lunch in Galicia. It's big. It's huge. We were warned about this by our Airbnb host that you don't ever eat this meal for dinner. Here, just watch what they gave us and I'll come back and explain a little more later. Lunch is the biggest, heaviest meal of the day here. And when I mean that, I mean you get all parts of the pig and maybe two pigs, there's a lot. thing we were just told is we get dessert. Six desserts, yes. Six desserts on top of two pigs. Yeah, lunch is a big thing here. Pure cow's cheese and some traditional dessert that I don't know what it is. Membrillo. This is the mix your own drinks portion of the lunch. This is pure alcohol. It's like grappa, but stronger, and they give you the different other flavors. I have no idea what this is, but not only do you get fat and sweetened, you get drunk. This is the leftovers from lunch. This is all the stuff that we couldn't eat. And unless you didn't notice it, we had a lot of pig. Everything from snout to tail to rib, you name it, we ate the part of the pig. Lots of pigs. And then that dessert, oh my God. Six different desserts, along with a build your own liquor liquor. And yeah, that was basically a bunch of liqueur and they gave you grain alcohol and you can make it as strong as you want. Yeah, now I understand. You don't ever eat one of these at night. So we're heading back to take a nap because that's all we can do. Do you see this building behind me? The stone thing with the cross on top? Well, there's a really good story for why they're here. They're everywhere here in Galicia, and it's because of witches. So apparently witchcraft is a thing here in Galicia. What those are are grain, not silos, but grain storage places. It's where you put, every good farmer puts all of his grain for the upcoming year. And well, they were afraid of curses. They were afraid of some witch coming and putting the old voodoo eye or whatever they do and your grain spoiling. That's why there's a cross on it, because they kind of believe that, well, God, the saints, Mother Mary, whatever they are, they're going to protect their grain from the curses from the witches. Well, I don't know whether you believe in that stuff or not, but hey, it's better safe than sorry. This next oddity has less to do with Galicia and more to do with silverware, or more specifically, any and every Airbnb that you will ever stay in in Europe is going to have these. You will be eating off of this fork. Why? It comes from Ikea. Every single apartment that you rent in Europe is going to be furnished from Ikea, including a sofa like this Schnorkel Ferber in Delightful Not Blue. You are probably going to see the Farfik Nugan Wall Storage Unit, or whatever they call it. You know I am making this stuff up, but isn't it fun to go to Ikea and just read all of the names? Another big oddity that you will find in every single Airbnb in every single place in Europe is this door because you're going to come to it, you're going to turn the handle, and it's not going to do what you think it did. You see, it's a trick door. The secret is you only turn the knob halfway, and that allows you to create it as a door. By the way, all the windows work the exact same way. It's very, very confusing. And at some point during your European kitchen experience, you're going to want to cook something and you're not going to be able to figure out how, because there's no words. There's too many languages here. So everything is minimalistic, little icon hidden. Do you see how to turn that fan on? It took me a long time, but I finally figured it out. You have to pull this out and then tuck way under there. You will find all of the 
Well, all the buttons that don't seem to want to work for me. And don't even get me started on washing machines. Assuming you even get a washing machine in Europe, which you're probably not going to be. I don't know what half of these things... What is that? Does anyone have a clue what that is? Oh, and assuming that you do have a washing machine, this is your dryer. They don't have dryers in Europe. No one has dryers. Get used to hanging stuff on a little... I don't even know what you want to call it. Okay, bonus oddity for you. I want you to guess what time it is. Now, I don't know when you're watching this, but it is the middle of May right here. The uh, light is still in the sky. You can see behind me, it's all blue. The sun just set. You could easily read a book here. It is, it's not even dusk yet. The lights just kind of came on behind me. What time do you think it is? So was your guess 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> it is 10 o'clock. The sun just went down, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. Now we are on the west side of Spain up here, which means we're already in kind of a weird time zone because Franco decided, anyway, there's a bit of history there with why we're in the wrong time zone here, but we're on the wrong side of the wrong time zone. So 11 o'clock tonight, I'll still be able to read out here. Uh, there's your little bonus oddity for you. The sun doesn't go down and it does come up early too. So, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, the sun is brightly shining in my bedroom window, which, you know, me gusta. The absolute strangest part of Galicia, for me at least, is that it's not Spain. Yes, it's Spain. This is a part of Spain, but it's not Spain. Every time I see a sign in Spanish or hear Spanish spoken, I'm just like, it can't be. This is not Spain allow me to go into a little more detail. The town that I'm in currently is Laline. It is dead smack in the middle of Galicia and it belongs in Iceland. If you look at the buildings up and down Main Street anywhere through here, they belongs in Reykjavik, Iceland. And in fact, one of the buildings I'm showing you actually was from there. Can you tell which one was which? Nope. This town belongs elsewhere. Now this could also be Main Street anywhere USA. Well, except they have a little more elaborate buildings than we have. We don't quite have churches like this in the States, but go with the analogy anyway. You know the kind of town I'm talking about. Small to mid-sized Americana, mom and pop shops that have been in business and proudly serving Nowheresville since 1952. Well, that's what it feels like here in this town and all the other towns that I've visited thus far in Galicia. It is a very comfortable feeling. It's like I've been here forever. This is where I want to raise my family and my grandkids and where you're going to bury me. And I know that's a bit of a cliche, but it is very, very comfortable here. But what it is not, it is not Spain. There is something about this town of Laline that is just taking me back, like back to when I was five or six years old in Alexandria, Virginia. Just a little kid playing in the dirt with his matchbox cars. I don't know what it is. It's, it's not the smell, it's not the sights, it's not anything. This doesn't look anything like where I grew up, but at the same time, the feel, the vibe, I'm back home again. This, this town of Laline is a chameleon. It is pretty much anything to everybody all the time. But it is every day you walk out and you see beauty, you see green, you think you're in some other, you don't know what country you're in. That is strange, but it is also gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful. And now that we've done the weird, let's say we get to uh, some of the not so weird, some of the actual beautiful, great things that you're gonna find here. <music> The absolute best part of Galicia, Spain, it's not a thing, it's not a place, it's a... Have you ever heard of the Camino? In Spanish, Camino literally means road or path, but it's not so much to do with your feet, it has everything to do with your mind. Now, I'm sure you've heard the expression, all roads lead to Rome. Well, in this case, all roads lead to this giant cathedral in Santiago de Compostela. And it is called the Camino de Santiago for that very reason. Everything leads there. So what do I mean by that? Well, yes, they are actual roadways. There are marked paths. You see these seashells with arrows and you just basically follow the seashells. But when I say a roadway or path, I'm not talking, you know, hey, let's go have an afternoon hike. I'm talking about a months long hike. I'm actually on the Camino right now, one of the many Caminos. This one is 54 kilometers from here 
So there, now I'm not gonna do the whole thing today, nor am I gonna bore you with all of the details and the how-to of running your own Camino, but I do wanna to talk to you about what it means to me. Both Nikki and I came up here to Galicia to, well, to go searching for something, both of us having something different. In her case, her grandfather was from here, from this very town, and she wants to research her family roots, her family history, see if she can find it where they are. Me, I'm searching for something different. I don't even know what I'm searching for, but honestly, I'm hoping that somehow, somewhere, some way, this Camino may help me figure it out. Okay, let's start with the Wikipedia version. You are supposed to start at your doorstep and you're not supposed to stop until you get to the cathedral. You have a little map book. You get stamps every time you stop to eat, drink, sleep, do whatever, you get a stamp and at the very end you get a diploma. But it is so much more than just that description. For me, the Camino is more than just this dirt trail. It is more than just walking around for a few hours. This entire journey, this entire around the world journey that I've been on and I'm gonna stay on, that is my Camino. I have been lost for a very long time now and I'm trying to figure out who Rick Higgins is, where he wants to go, and where he needs to be. And yeah, I know that sounds all earthy, crunchy, new wave BS kind of stuff, and I have plenty of friends who'll be the first ones to tell me that. But it's true. I have been struggling for a very long time to figure out what the second half of my life is supposed to be like. And that is why I am on this journey. That is why I quit my job. That is why I am walking this dirt path, which sometimes has some gravel on it, to try to continue that journey, the up here journey, to figure out, to come to peace, to, to actually become who I need to be. you as you and that is about all of the words that i have for you today i'm not going to discuss any more about the camino but i am going to walk it however many more kilometers i have today come along with me sort of enjoy some of the scenery i'm just going to stop talking we can both get into our zen space and don't go away because this video isn't quite over yet help but feeling just loving this moment can we stay here forever I'm loving this moment, can we stay here together? Like I've mentioned a time or two in this video, this just does not feel like Spain, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's unique, and I've become completely enamored with this region. And with that, kind of watch the video that's popping up because that was the region that I was previously enamored with. You kind of see a pattern, I get enamored a lot. Anyway, with that, be healthy, be happy, and we will see you soon.